Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Ridwanullah family. Welcome back to another episode of Ridwanullah TV show. I'm your host and life maximizer, Hussein Mahmoud, working to help you completely balance and maximize your life in this dunya and in the akhirah by the grace, will, and for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Verily, all praise and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, owner, and sustainer. May the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon the most esteemed leader and most honorable teacher, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions, and those who follow him until the day of judgment. And also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is worthy of all worship and praise without any associates or intermediaries. Um, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen um, In today's episode, what we will be talking about Actually, let me just make it a big deal This is the last episode for the year Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Of 1440, the Hijri year This is the 45th episode of the year um, And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen What we're going to be talking about is Pretty much going to be a cherry on top type of situation Where we're going to be talking about um, reflecting, correcting, and avoiding insanity, plus more, bidhanillahi ta'ala. Reflecting, correcting, and avoiding insanity, bidhanillahi ta'ala. Uh, but before we dive in, uh, let's start with the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then uh, we'll continue to move forward, bidhanillahi ta'ala.
الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه uh, Verily all praise and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to start with his kalam uh, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who not only listen but also implement um, the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Rabbil Alameen Moving on to the sponsors, announcements and updates The default sponsor that we have is Ridwanullah Organization um, it, is an, it is an Islamic personal professional development organization Specifically designed to help you completely balance And maximize your life Not only in this dunya but more importantly in the akhirah as well by the grace, will, and for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So your love and support for that organization will be greatly appreciated, bi ta'ala. Um, and also just getting into the announcements and updates, um, there's something that I've been working on in the background for a very, very long time, and I'm in the process of getting that launched. Um, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, and it is Ridwanullah University. Um, which is an online monthly membership program where we have two live sessions per month uh, One of them is to do a particular lesson within life to help you balance and maximize it And then two weeks later, uh, we're going to be following it up with a question and answer style Coaching and consulting And you know, we try to provide the recordings in a library of uh, videos That you could Access and refer to 24-7 B'idhanillahi ta'ala um, That program is going to be uh, $30 per month B'idhanillahi ta'ala um, And uh, it'll take roughly about 3 to 5 hours per month um, Any other thing that you want to do in it or outside of it Would be at your discretion B'idhanillahi ta'ala But generally uh, plan and prepare about 3 to 5 hours for it per month um, and then, you know, we continue on this journey on, you know, completely balancing and maximizing our lives in this dunya and in the akhirah by the grace, will, and for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, initially, I thought it was going to be, you know, a sign-up form just automatically for anybody who wants to join. But I found it important, at least in the beginning, to go through an application process where individuals apply for Radwanullah University so they could be approved to be able to join that bidhanillahi ta'ala um, A lot of the details will be coming up shortly uh, We'll be starting the first uh, month will be Muharram of 1441 um, That's usually about a week or so from now So, uh, you know, send your applications um, Actually, we'll, we'll try to provide the details to uh, Radwanullah University uh, Once we have that available bidhanillahi ta'ala um, if you want to, you know, just put yourself on the list of those individuals who are going to be considered uh, Just send us an email to RidwanullahUniversity at gmail.com um, This is a paid for monthly membership program, as I've mentioned $30 per month roughly takes about three to five hours of your time for the whole month uh, To, you know, join the information that we're going to be sharing And then anything else that you want to do on top of that uh, would be at your discretion bidhanillahi ta'ala So um, that is a huge, huge announcement for me uh, Because I've been planning and preparing and dreaming And coming up with so many ideas uh, But inshallah this is what it seems like we're going to be sticking to uh, Bidhanillahi ta'ala moving forward um, That's generally, I mean obviously uh, Those are pretty much the announcements and updates uh, we just got, uh, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Eid Al-Adha completed Oh, um, Inshallah, after next, well actually this week that we're in um, Inshallah, this will be the last episode of this year I'm going to be taking two weeks off from creating any sort of content or anything like that um, So I can, you know, plan and prepare And this is my fourth quarter Ridwanullah retreat uh, just kind of, you know, plan and prepare for next year and next quarter, bidhanillahi ta'ala. And then two weeks after that, we'll be coming back with a new season, new year of Ridwanullah uh, TV show, uh, which will be 45 episodes for the whole year, bidhanillahi ta'ala. I'm looking forward to next year. I don't know exactly what it holds, but I hope that uh, we're going to be interviewing individuals to 
uh, share different aspects of, you know, different experts in different areas of the of, of, of balancing and maximizing our lives in this dunya and in the akhira bidnillah ta'ala. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, just, you know, please keep in mind if you don't see any content or any information or I don't respond to anybody uh, in the next two weeks, know that we're, we're uh, I'll be in my um, fourth quarter Ridwanullah retreat bidnillah ta'ala. Um, any other announcements and updates? Um, you know, there's there's two or three events and or seminars and events that I'm in the process of working through with other individuals. Be the ta'ala. So just keep an eye out for that. I don't I, I don't have the exact details right now, uh, but inshallah, you guys will be able to see a lot more of that. Be the ta'ala. And the last few things. Be the ta'ala. Is that um, you know I'm working on uh, becoming you know, a, a speaker, uh, as well as a teacher and trainer, furthermore, coaching and consulting as well. So if you have an event or organization or something along those lines that you would like for me to be either a keynote speaker or one of the speakers, be it in Allahi Ta'ala, um, send your request, budget, and details to Ridwanullah organization at gmail.com um, and then I'll be able to work through confirming uh, the speaking engagements with you guys, be in Allahi Ta'ala. And also, if you would like for me to train, teach and train on a particular topic that you guys are interested in, either for you and or your organization and team, I'll be more than happy to uh, do that for you. Maybe it's a particular area that you are struggling with, or maybe it's just an area that you guys want to grow in. In either of those cases, I'll be able to help you and your organization succeed. So you could bring me in as a teacher and trainer uh, to help you guys. And if you guys would like for me to coach and consult you, I also do that as well. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. You can send your request, budget, and details to Ridwanullah organization at gmail.com in any of those instances. And I'll be able to do the best that I can to help you completely balance and maximize your life in this dunya and in the akhirah by the grace, will, and for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, those are all the announcements and updates that I can think about. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Um, if anybody is asking about it, let them know. Be the Nillahi Ta'ala, pass on the message. Um, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. That is all the uh, sponsorships, announcements, and updates that I have as of right now. Um, so, getting on to the episode for today, the Ridwanullah TV show will be about reflecting, correcting, and avoiding insanity, plus more. Be the Nillahi Ta'ala. And this is a topic that I've been thinking about for a long time simply because <laughs> I've been so focused on happily achieving that I started to remember that quote. It said, you know, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Um, and, you know, to be quite honest with you, I think I've been falling under that category where, you know, I've been doing the same thing pretty much over and over and over again, expecting different results, which is in an essence, or generally speaking, the definition of insanity. Because how could you be doing the same thing over and over and over again, the exact same way? but expecting different results, or maybe making minor shifts and adjustments that do not really accumulate to much, but then you're expecting the results that you're really after, when in reality, you really have to kind of shift, maneuver through a couple of things to be able to make the reality of the outcomes and results that you are after true. Um, so you really have to kind of you know, figure out how to adjust and adapt and figure out the different modalities on how you could make certain different, how you can make different decisions, how you could have different thoughts and ideas, and how you could, you know, focus on a particular thing and get hungry for it, and you know, ask yourself particular questions that will give you different emotions, that will be in the Taala allow you to make different types of decisions. The light is out. Give me a second. Let me get this turned on. One second. automatic lights alhamdulillah rabbil alamin so you we need to be able to figure out you know how to make different decisions and taking different types of actions 
to be able to produce the different types of results that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destined for us and that we also need and want. We really have to take a different approach to it, bi ta'ala. And I'm really, really, really fired up simply because I've been doing the same thing over and over again, the same way, expecting different results. I don't want to be insane no more. I got to change a couple of things and put it in practice and be able to take my life. I want to balance my life and maximize my life as well as business be in this dunya and in the akhirah by the grace, will, and for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we're going to be talking about what it really means to reflect and correct and avoid insanity, why it's important, and how we can particularly do that not only in our life but also business or other endeavors that we might have going on at this particular moment in our lives. So it's important, needless to say, extremely important. Um, I remember one of my one of the quotes that I read from uh, that, that I picked up from Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu that is very very famous and a lot of people know about it. And I shared it with one of my friends, and he always reminds me that it's one of his favorite uh, sayings or quotes. And that is basically to account, hold yourself accountable before you are held accountable. And that is what Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu reminded us of. So it's important for us, my skin is almost shivering because it is so true that we have to hold ourselves accountable and the individuals that we are responsible for to hold them accountable before we are held accountable. What does that mean? We're going through life in ways that are either progressive or digressive, meaning we're moving forward or heading backwards. We're never standing in the same situation because as time is going on, we are either moving forward or we're going behind. So time does not wait for anybody. What does that mean? In this dunya, when, we are in the, when, when we're existing in this life, we are struggling and striving for something. Um, and that something is going to be we're going to be held accountable to all of those different areas of our lives that we are struggling and striving for. And that is primarily in the akhirah also some of the accountability and um, uh, you know reflecting and correcting will be in this dunya as well. But the day of judgment is what we're talking about specifically. Uh, when the individuals will be running away from each other. It's, 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 it's the, the friends, the family. It's that day that we're talking about where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Jalla wa ala, will be calling us to account for every single thing that we did, every single way that we did it, in, in per, specifically, precisely measured and weighed balance. So either your, your good deeds could outweigh your bad deeds or your bad deeds could outweigh your good deeds. So before that day comes, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold us accountable for the things that we said, the things that we did, the things that we were in the process of. And I know it's either the things that we said and did that will be held accountable, but we also have to account for our thoughts and feelings, the reoccurring thoughts and feelings that we have either about our deen and self, our family and relatives, our finance and work, or our ummah and world. In each of those areas and categories of our lives, we really, 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 really have to pay very, very close attention to it simply because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be asking us about every single area of that, of our lives. And, you know, the accountability is real, right? Um, you know, we, we, we start off as employees, uh, and hopefully transitioning into self-employment, employer, and also an investor. And those are the different modalities and different areas. I don't even know why I'm using modality. It just sounds cool. It just sounds like I'm sophisticated. You heard me? Um, but in any of those areas of our lives, we have to account for ourselves before we are held accountable. Hence, reflecting, looking at the different areas of your life, correcting, making sure that what you're doing wrong is corrected right and made right, and avoiding insanities, right? Simply doing the same thing 
over and over again, but sadly expecting different results and not getting it and consistently falling behind every single time is a tragedy. It's a tragedy that I felt for too long. It's a tragedy that I'm feeling fed up and fired up about. I'm, I've, I've, I'm, I'm so fed up about it. I don't want my life to repeat itself in a negative way. I don't want to keep, keep repeating the same mistakes. And I don't want to keep falling outside of the boundaries, rules, and regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the individuals who don't hold themselves accountable before they are held accountable and trying to reflect and correct the different areas of their lives and businesses and everything else, sadly, they're going to be experiencing the same type of pain, the same type of feeling like you're stuck in a rut every single day. And that's a sad reality that majority of us are experiencing. And to be quite honest with you, to be quite honest with you, one of the things that allowed me to, you know, find some sense of accountability and, you know, uh, you know, reflecting and correcting and avoiding insanity was simply because when I was coaching consultants, consulting some of my clients um, that I've been working with. I've realized every single person that I work with in one way or the other, this is one of the most common denominators that I've seen myself, is that they say day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, I'm struggling and striving, but I'm not progressing anywhere. SubhanAllah, how many of us fall under that category? You know, I know, I know individuals that are actually making something happen feel this way as well. What about those individuals who are not doing anything? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine those individuals who are not moving forward in their lives? Not the people who only feel like they're not moving forward in their lives, but in actuality, incrementally, they are. But what about those individuals who are not even feeling like they're, pro they're not progressing in life? That's a sad reality. Those are the individuals who are not reflecting and correcting. At the very least, the individuals that I'm coaching and consulting are the individuals who want to progress forward. And they're understanding and realizing and recognizing and, 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 and pretty much to a certain degree acknowledging their lack of progress. But what about the individual who doesn't even feel that at all? Um, that is the individual who gave up. That is the individual who has to hit rock bottom in order for them to actually start reflecting and correcting. Some of us either do it willingly or some of us are going to be forced to reflect and correct, right? Holding each other accountable. Um, so it's important for us to be proactive in holding each other accountable, holding ourselves accountable and those who we are responsible for accountable and reflecting and correcting plus avoiding insanity, that is the reality that we have to face. Because, you know, honestly, uh, I'll share my story with you, but let me just, just generally share with you what accountability, reflecting, and correcting really is. Um, that's generally just saying, you know, I'm going to assess and have a vision of, before assessing, have a vision of where I want to be. Right, And if you don't even have the internal or external strength to be able to say, you know, this is the vision that I have for my life. This is my dream, my goals and ambitions and aspirations and ideas, then that's where a lot of the faults are. So you have to have a vision. You have to assess. So and, 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 and rewarding the good that you're doing and punishing the bad that you're doing so you don't repeat that again, whatever form of punishment that may mean for you. So you really have to have different levels of accountability and that in essence is what accountability really is. And you could do that on the individual level, on the family level, on the business level, and also the community level. Uh, whether you lead a masjid or anything like that, if you don't hold yourself accountable, it's going to be a sad reality. As a matter of fact, I'll go on to the next step of saying it, it is a tragedy, right? Because Every single day, if you, as the leader of yourself, as the leader of your family, as the leader of your businesses and organizations, as the leader of your massages and everything else that is related to that within our ummah and world, 
If you are not progressing, if you are not holding yourself accountable, reflecting and correcting, then who else will be doing that for that that is a part of your followers? It's not gonna happen at the level that we want it to be. So you and me have to be that leading example for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And don't be afraid to hold yourself accountable in others. So that, in essence, is what accountability, reflecting, and correcting generally is. is having a vision, assessing, and basically rewarding or punishing, right? And we hate to use the word punishment, but that's the reality of our circumstances. That's the reality of our lives. We really have to do that, bi-idhanillahi ta'ala, or else it's going to be one of those situations where uh, we're going to be, you know, going on a downward spiral. We're going to be experiencing ruts and rock bottoms. And any of those three elements is not a good situation because sometimes we think we might have hit rock bottom, but there's a different level of rock bottom that is the true rock bottom that we haven't really hit yet. That's a new low of the low. So before we get that, before we get there, we really have to act like our back is really against the wall right off the bat. ta'ala. So that is in essence what accountability, reflecting and correcting really is. Now before I dive into why it's important, and I've mentioned it here and there, but I wanted to be able to focus in that segment for a little bit. But before I get there, ta'ala, I want you to think about a story, and it's my particular story. Um, and I've realized I'm a very busy person. To a certain degree, I'm a very productive person. And to another degree, I'm a lazy person. I, I'm not lazy, I have, habit, I have a habit of being lazy certain times of my life when I'm overwhelmed or anything along those lines. But one of the things that I've realized is that in a particular area of my life, primarily one or two, maybe three, if not more than that, I consistently do not produce the level, the, any result, let alone the level of results, outcomes and results that I'm particularly after. And the sad thing that I've realized is I've been doing the same thing over and over again. And that's when the quote popped in my head, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. If you keep taking the same actions that you are taking right now, it is guaranteed that you will keep getting the same outcomes and results that you're getting right now. If you want to start taking, if you want to start getting different results and out outcomes and results, you have to start taking different, you have to start making different decisions and taking different actions. So for me, when that came about, I started to reflect. I'm like, what are the outcomes and results that I'm after? And right now I could tell you, one of them is part of my deen and self, and the other one is my finance and work. And these are the two main areas that I constantly think about of my life every single day. And I've realized I've been desiring this particular outcome and result, result, right? But I've been taking the same actions. But then I started to realize that I have to start taking different actions that I've already slowly but surely started to implement, even though a particular portion of it I'm still avoiding. And I'll tell you, I'll be transparent with you. And I'll be quite honest with you. Maybe not completely transparent for just, you know, keeping it short and sweet. But... In the level of transparency that I want to give you is that, you know, for me, to be quite honest with you, you know, putting all the hype and everything aside, you know, one of my goals and dreams is to become an Islamic scholar, bi ta'ala. Within that same token, one of my other dreams is to become an investorpreneur. That is just an investing entrepreneur, basically. And you can see those two elements kind of tug at each other in different levels. And I had to come to terms in certain degrees that I had limiting beliefs about a particular thing that I wanted to achieve. And the sad part is I've been avoiding a particular thing of that, that I've been constantly doing the same thing over and over and over again. 
And then I realized I really have to focus on the particular outcome, which is learning, becoming a student of knowledge and learning about my dean and, you know, sitting with the scholars and everything else. But then the other part of it, which is my investorpreneur side, starts to kick in and start battling with these different parts of my life. And I've realized I really have to start earning more money at the same time whether that's through my employment, my businesses and or investments or whatever else I'm in the process of working through. And I've realized I've been so focused and so busy building a particular thing and I wasn't getting anywhere. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, let me take a step back. I've, I've, I've been producing particular results, but the results that I haven't been producing is I haven't been able to learn Arabic even, even after years of uh, you know, wanting to learn it. And I haven't been able to get my income to the level that I want or, or, or starting the business that I want, even though I've been thinking about it and dreaming about it for so long and so many years. Simply because I've been doing the same thing over and over again, expecting to, to learn Arabic, expecting to make money, expecting to improve my deen, expecting not the lights to turn off, so give me a second, I'll be back. <sighs> SubhanAllah. All right. Oh, man, I don't know how long I'll be able to do this. Maybe it's looking like every 15 minutes I got to get up and go do that. But anyway, I've realized I haven't been marketing and selling. I haven't been, you know, making sufficient amount of money to be able to, you know, make room and time to be able to be the ta'ala focus on learning my deen focus on improving my uh, uh, my arabic my my memorization of the quran and hadith and learning the different types of disciplines that um, i want to be able to dive into that i started diving into but for some reason fell off of it for a couple of months and years even sadly to say so i really have to figure out how to you know take my dean and business in all areas of my life to that next level. And the way that I'm doing it right now is, you know, all of those things that I've been avoiding of marketing and selling um, in one way or the other, um, that's what I'm planning on uh, approaching. The, 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 the stuff that I'm very, very uncomfortable with, such as, um, you know, scheduling a particular time to study, uh, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and I'm not saying I, I, you know I, I, I don't want to do that I honestly do in my heart of heart I really do whatever that means right but then I feel like certain areas of my life has kind of been playing tug and war so what I've realized is I cannot say okay I'm going to put you know investing in business or whatever aside and I'm going to focus on studying Islam right and I could do that, but as a person who's responsible for a family and myself, you know, with bills to pay, rent, water, everything else, and everything you could imagine, um, and other financial goals and aspirations, and um, even to, to be able to find time to study, or either, either locally or abroad, certain levels of it will take certain money. So instead of saying, I'm going to quit, you know, uh, doing business and all of these things, what I've realized is I'm going to start doubling down on both of them and start doing the most uncomfortable thing that I could do to be able to get to that next level of any of these areas that I'm struggling with right now. So I started, you know, the Radwanullah University uh, that I've been talking about for a little while now um, and that we are accepting applications for, which is basically uh, an online monthly membership program that is designed to help you completely balance and maximize your life and business in this dunya and in the akhirah by the grace, will, and for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you're only interested in life, we could specifically deal with the life aspect of it. And if you're particularly in interested in business, maybe that's going to be a separate program. But every now and then we're going to be touching on it primarily, bidunillahi ta'ala. So I've started, I've, I've been putting in a lot of work behind the scenes to be able to make that dream a reality. Um, you know, and there's a few students that I'm working with at this particular moment and trying to get them enrolled um, and, and, and applied and accepted bi ta'ala. Um, so that's a particular area that I was not comfortable with, which is marketing and selling 
different products and services. And for me right now um, is that Ridwanullah uh, University that I'm primarily focused on right now. And that is gonna be on Sundays uh, on a monthly basis. Actually, the first, sun, the first week Sunday and two weeks later, we're gonna be doing that between 9 to 10.30 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, Bidhani Allah Ta'ala. Those are when the live sessions will be available um, through uh, Ridwanullah University, Bidhani Allah Ta'ala. So I hope to be able to contribute to completely balancing and maximizing your life um, in this dunya and in the akhirah by the grace, will, and for the pleasure of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. So I've been, you know, primarily focused on that and trying to figure out how I could, you know, start selling that to be able to earn some type of income or more income, I should say, to be able to, you know, have that, 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 that the, the money, the time, energy and effort to be able to put into my deen and all of the other areas of my life and giving me the type of freedom that I'm really, really after, bi-idhanillahi ta'ala. So that is my personal story for whatever of it makes sense or not, whatever of it you could relate to or not, that's the reality, right? And that is kind of what triggered me to think um, I, I want to avoid insanity and stop, you know, doing the same thing over and over again, bi-idhanillahi ta'ala. And, you know, you can see from, from, from the examples of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions and the the prophets and messengers of before, that they've spent a lot of time introspecting, they've spent a lot of time reflecting and correcting, they've spent a lot of time holding themselves accountable as well as those that they are responsible for, accountable as well, bi-idhanillahi ta'ala, and that is what we have to do, what we have to start doing. You know, um, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, when the wahya came to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where was he? He was on a retreat. He retreated to the mountain, I believe it's called Hira, if I'm not mistaken. Subhanallah, and it's just kind of reminding me of the Umrah um, that I went to a couple of months ago, alhamdulillah. Um, you know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to retreat and take time off to, you know, hold himself accountable, reflecting and correcting and trying to figure out how he could progress and move forward in all areas of his life. And I submit to you and myself that we have to start doing the same So diving into the different part of it Which is why is it important to hold ourselves accountable Reflecting, correcting, and more um, And the first thing that I found out is Is that you will avoid insanity I've been repeating that over and over again You will avoid insanity Right? Who, who wants to be insane? Honestly, I don't, to be quite honest with you. I don't want to repeat the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. So for me to hold myself accountable, for me to reflect and correct, is in a way to avoid insanity, which is primarily doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. The second of the four reasons why I feel like it's important to hold each other accountable, hold ourselves accountable, is you'll find clarity and control, right? If you're always in the jungle, always in the mess, and you're not taking a step back and getting a bird's eye view, what is the reality of your circumstances in life? You're going to be overwhelmed. You're going to be stressed, depressed with anxiety and apprehension and all of these other terms of spirituality and psychology that we're experiencing on a regular basis, let alone the external world that we're experiencing on top of the internal world that we are having, uh, that, that we're experiencing on a regular basis. So by taking a break, reflecting and correcting and accounting, holding yourself accountable, bi-idhanillahi ta'ala, you will start to make sure that you gain clarity and control. And that's part of the the, the, the ingredients of success uh, You have to have clarity and control I, I've never seen someone Who is completely overwhelmed That achieved anything They have to overcome that overwhelm To be able to achieve that So that's the second reason The third reason why it's important To hold yourself to accountable, reflect and correct Is that You will find traction Right You, you 
by by not holding yourself accountable and reflecting and correcting, you're basically spinning your wheels at best if you're not sliding backwards in your in your life and business or whatever else you're focused on. So once you ref once you hold yourself accountable and you reflect and correct, what happens is you'll start to see progress in your life and business, right? And once you start to experience that progress, what really happens is you'll start to move forward and start finding traction, bi'idhinillahi ta'ala. So that's another reason why it's so important to be able to, um, you know, hold ourselves accountable, accountability, reflecting and correcting, bi'idhinillahi ta'ala. And I hope that as I'm working through this, because whenever I listen to different podcasts and shows and different lectures and courses and programs or whatever else I'm in the process of immersing myself in, whenever the, the teacher or the speaker is speaking or the host is speaking, I start to think about different parts of my life that I need to improve on or hold myself accountable for as I'm thinking about it right now. Because when I was given the khutbah, I think a week or so back, um, that's one of the brothers, he came up to me, he's like, as you were saying this point, I started to think about this particular area of my life, and that allowed me to kind of make the connection that I need to come to this resolution to be able to get this different results that I'm after. And similarly for me, I want the same thing for you to be able to help you find your traction in your goals and dreams in life and business so it's important for us to continuously reflect on that type, that part of our lives um, in different areas of our lives to be able to hold ourselves accountable, reflect and correct, to be able to move forward and find traction. And last but not least, and to be able to submit to you, this is the most important reason why we should hold ourselves accountable um, and, and reflect and correct is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger continuously re remind us to and exemplify what that really means. Um, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a lot of the times, and He says, do they not reflect? Do they not contemplate? Do they not think? You know, that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps mentioning to us in hopes that, you know, in, in instructing that, instructing us to do that, bi'idhinillahi ta'ala. You know, in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taking retreats, I don't know how regularly that was, but it was pretty regular that he used to take time off away from the people, away from his wife, away from his, uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his companions, his, you know, his ummah and, 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 and work and everything else that he was engaged in. Even Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu, when he said, hold yourself accountable before you are held accountable. Um, you know, and also you could tell from the example of Abu Bakr, uh, radiallahu anhu, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, um, that he used to reflect and correct often. I remember one time even learning about him that he had a little bit of temper. I don't know how big of a temper it was, but he used to express his thoughts and feelings and then all of a sudden he will feel bad and, you know, ask other people for forgiveness. And if they didn't, if they didn't, ex if they didn't, Forgive him. He would complain to the. He would complain to about them to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, so that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam could rectify uh, the situation from the le from the lectures that I've listened to, um, and that could be verified by even Allah Taala somehow, some way. But it's important for us to reflect and correct. You know, it, it, it's 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 ex ex extraordinarily important to hold ourselves accountable because we will be held accountable. You know, if not by the creation, by the create, utmost, first and foremost by the creator, if not the creation, right? And, you know, for those who've been done wrong, uh, for those who are doing wrong, understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be the one who will be holding us accountable. So we really have to start making sure that we're holding each other, holding ourselves and each other accountable, reflecting and correcting. You know, whether you happen to be a parent who has a youth that is struggling um, with different life events, it's important for us to reflect and correct ourselves and hold each other accountable before we, held, we hold our children accountable because what I found is even for my own kids and wife, whenever we're in a lot of disagreements, it is simply a reflection of me 
going outside of the boundaries, rules, and regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for me to come back within the boundaries, rules, and regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in essence to help them do the same as well within due, within due time with work and nasiha and everything else that you can imagine. So, you know, following the Qur'an and the sunnah is, 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 is very, very important. That is where, you know, the, the, the main source of our guidance of our instruction and of our manual, and not only the main source, not the main source, the source. Um, and I don't believe that there's any other source that could be out there that we should be paying attention to, sadly, that we are, even though we are. We really have to, speaking to myself first and foremost, come back to the Quran and the Sunnah, bi'idhinillahi ta'ala. And, you know, try to learn about it more, implement it more. Um, and teach others and endure it all with patience be in ta'ala. So those are the main reasons why it's important for us to hold each other hold ourselves and each other accountable, reflecting correct be in ta'ala. So getting on to the other section, the last but not least section is how, right? Because we talked about the, what it is, what is accountability, what is reflecting, what is uh, correcting. And we, we talked about why it's important. And the next step that we really have to get into is how. And, you know, we've already mentioned a couple of things already, uh, but I just want to give myself and you, bi'idhinillahi ta'ala, a few tips to be able to figure out how we could hold ourselves and others accountable and reflecting correct on a regular basis. You know, and to be quite honest with you, um, there are some that I'll share with you that are sacred steps, and there are some that I'll share with you that are secular steps, but in any case, has to be within the boundaries, rules, and regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the first one is to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, is very, very important. Um, being conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, is extremely important. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from hypocrisy. It's extremely important to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to be shy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us taqwa. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, the second thing that we should do is do a lot of istighfar and tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, um, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness more than a hundred times a day. Um, and the comparison of that is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sinless. Yet he asked Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for forgiveness like he was the biggest of sinner. SubhanAllah. Um, every single day, every single moment. Even though his past and future sins were forgiven, he continuously asked Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for forgiveness so his status and rank could go higher and higher. Subhanahu uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But in contrast, 
For us, we are swimming in our sins, not even doused in. We are swimming in the oceans of our sins, and we rarely ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. So we really have to, um, you know, continuously work on asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tubu ila Allahi jami'an, uh, Tubu ila Allahi. Astaghfirullah, I believe. Tubu ila Allahi jami'an, ay, jami'an, ayyuhal mu'minun. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ I think I probably read that incorrectly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Return, O you who believe uh, that we may become successful. So we have to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously asking for uh, forgiveness بِذْنِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى And the, the third and last but not least reason is to exchange every bad deed with a good one. Every bad deed that we have, we have to exchange it for a good one. So if we commit one sin, we have to replace it with a good one, just like our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reminded us. So those are the three main steps that we could take uh, to be able to reflect and correct. Um, you know, also the other things that I would add on to that is to have a vision, right? Because once you have a vision of where you want to be, you can assess that. Say, okay, out of 100%, where am I? If you have 40%, then you, you know, celebrate and reward that 40%. And how can you achieve the other 60%? So asking yourself those types of questions will be important. Celebrating and rewarding, your, rewarding and celebrating your success is very important. Punishing and correcting your failures um, is going to be also important and to a certain degree celebrating your failures as well uh, but you don't want to celebrate your sins if it becomes a sin you want to punish yourself for it before you are punished reflect and correct before you have to reflect and correct bidhanillahi <laughs> ta'ala I guess this, this is probably a good thing I Giving me a little bit of exercise, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. <clears throat> so that is in essence how we can start doing this. And you know, you could think about many ways that you could do it. For me, uh, I, 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 I tend to follow uh, the, the, the footsteps to the best of my abilities, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what I do is on a quarterly basis, meaning every three months of the year, one week or two or three weeks, I take off to you know hold myself accountable, reflect and correct, um, as well as the people that I'm responsible for as well. Be even in Allah Taala. So that's one one of the ways that I do. You know, obviously trying to do all of these different elements of um, working on having taqwa of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, which is important. Um, you know, doing istighfar and toba, which is important. Um, and you know, continuously doing good deeds and replacing any bad deed that we've committed with. Any good deed that we could do is very, very important. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. So we really have to continuously work on those different areas of our lives. I hope something that I've said in this episode and this show had, you know, lit a light bulb inside of you. Um, it kind of came late, but you get the point. Um, you know, I hope that uh, we're able to uh, hold ourselves accountable and those we are responsible for and reflect and correct before we are held accountable and reflected on and corrected um, before it's too late uh, bi-idhanillahi ta'ala and you know I felt like this is very very important to uh, to, to end uh, this year's Ridwanullah TV show with um, and if, it, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows uh, this is the topic that we're going to be covering either throughout the, the year and especially at the end of the year uh, because you know at the end of the year Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us an opportunity to uh, hold ourselves accountable reflect and correct because you know the, the hijri year is ending uh, within a, if it's not if it's not already if it if it hasn't already ended by the time you're watching this when it came out um, it's gonna end and we really have to get ready for the new year 
And similarly, our lives will end, and we're going to have to get ready for the next. This life will end, and we're going to have to get ready for the next life. So it's very, very important to hold each other accountable, um, reflect and correct and moving forward. Be in Allah Ta'ala. Um, hold ourselves accountable before we are held accountable is the reminder that Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu mentioned to us. Um, so take heed. For me, is the, I, I say this passionately because honestly, I'm not talking to you. Even though I am, I'm talking to myself first and foremost because if I don't hold myself accountable and the people that I'm responsible for and reflect and correct is going to not be is not only going to be a tragedy tragedy for me, but also those who are who I'm responsible for and I love. Um, so I have to be that individual to continuously progress in the direction of my dreams uh, towards pleasing Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So we have to uh, continuously work on that. Be um, so that is it, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, for this episode. Um, we're going to work on summarizing and concluding here, uh, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. I hope that you hold yourself accountable and you reflect and correct uh, yourself, those around you, in your life and business, in this dunya and in the akhirah, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. Um, I hope that you understand the reasons why now, and this is just the ones that I could come up with. Um, you know, at this particular moment, I'm pretty sure there's more reasons that you can think about. And I hope that you know how to do it now, which is have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do istighfar and tawbah, and do good deeds. Um, and so much more, right? Um, and, you know, these are just the starter, you know, appetizers, and you could continuously uh, work on that. Um, if any of the Radwanullah University students are watching, um, and you guys would like for me to cover this in one of the months, um, please let me know and then we'll cover this topic ta'ala, in the online uh, monthly membership program that we do every single month um, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen and if you would like to join that online monthly membership program send your um, email to Radwanullah organization um, and then we'll, we'll kind of direct you to uh, organization at gmail.com and we'll direct you to um, the application process um, so inshallah you could be joining us on that uh, in that program bi'idhnillahi ta'ala and then we'll move on from there bi'idhnillahi ta'ala so you know I hope that you understand that it's a step by step day at a time type of thing um, and we continuously work on that for me personally for the organization that I lead um, and my family and, and, and everything else in and around that bi'idhnillahi ta'ala so my challenge to you is to reflect on how you're holding yourself accountable and how you're reflecting and correcting. Are you doing it in a systematic way? Are you doing it haphazardly? Or maybe you're not even doing it at all. Or maybe you're doing it so weakly. Not weakly, but weakly. <laughs> I hope you get it. <laughs> I confused myself a little bit and I hope I didn't confuse you. Um, but my challenge to you is to assess your accountability and reflection and correcting. Be even in light, ta'ala, and see where you stand. Are you holding yourself accountable and reflecting and correcting at, the, at a high level? Or are you doing it on a low level? So be even in light, ta'ala, uh, continuously watch for that. And we'll be able to uh, move forward from there. Be even in light, ta'ala. Um, so that's my challenge. Uh, summary and conclude. Hold yourself accountable before you are held accountable. Understand that it's very, very important. And there are productive and progressive ways that we can hold each other and ourselves accountable. So that's pretty much it uh, for this episode. Uh, to remind you guys of the sponsors, announcements, and updates. Our sponsor is Radwanullah Organization by default. It is a... It is an Islamic personal professional, primarily Islamic personal professional development organization that is specifically designed to help you completely balance and maximize your life and business in this dunya and in the akhirah by the grace, will, and for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, if you've liked this episode, oh, uh, the, the reminder of the uh, um, announcements and updates, Radwanullah TV is going to be up and running very, fairly shortly. We're starting this year, 1440, uh, the first week of 
um, the Muharram, the program will start. Um, that is around September uh, 8th, ta'ala, within a couple of weeks. Um, so send, your, send an email to Radwanullah organization if you want to sign up for that program, that mo online monthly membership program. You will have access to live sessions online as well as library, an amazing community of like-minded ind individuals that we're planning in the process of building. Uh, so I would love you, I would love, I would love you, uh, yeah, I would love you. <laughs> um, I don't know what I'm getting at, but y'all know what I'm talking about, where I would love for you to join our Radwanullah family by joining Radwanullah University, bismillah ta'ala. I also do speaking, training, and coaching as well. So if you would love for me to speak at your event or train your you and your team, or just coach you guys as well. Send your request, budget, and details to RidwanullahOrganization at gmail.com and let me know specifically what you need and want. I'll be more than happy to help you uh, do that. Be the Nilai Taala. So send your request, budget, and details to RidwanullahOrganization at gmail.com. Be the Nilai Taala. Oh. Uh, you know, my website is up, it's a very under construction, it's a big mess right now, but inshallah, within due time, everything will be up to par. Uh, but go to radwanullah.com and you'll be able to get a lot of the information there. Um, as of right now, we have the home, we have about, we have the blog, and the university pages. And we'll continue to add a little bit more, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, but in any of those things, you'll be able to learn more from there, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. Um, so, yeah. If, you've let, if, you, if you are part of the Ridwanullah family, Jazakallah khair. If you're not, please press the subscribe button and press the notification bell to get uh, to, be, to join the Ridwanullah family and to be first to be notified of any of the new videos that are coming out. Um, and go on to Ridwanullah.com and sign up for the mailing list. That is one of our, if not, the, actually that is the main method of communication that we use. Um, and if you've liked this video, please press the like button and leave your comments below on the section down below. Um, and if you know somebody that could benefit from holding themselves accountable, reflecting and correcting, and if you found that this could be as valuable for them as it was for me and you, please share this video with them. It'll help us grow as well, helping you and others grow as well. Um, so I'd really, really appreciate that as well. Um, and that's pretty much it. Jazakumullah khair, Ridwanullah family, for tuning in to another episode of Ridwanullah TV show. I'm your host, life and business maximizer, Hussein Muhammad, checking out by saying, never ever give up on completely maximizing, completely balancing and maximizing your life and business in this dunya and in the akhirah by the grace, will, and for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.